Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to this lesson where we're going to build on what we learned about arcs and using curved lines. Let's go into, now that we have some stuff in this environment that we can work with, cleaning it up a bit, using the select tool or the eraser tool to kind of clean up what we're doing or specifically uh, manipulate what we're doing now that we have some stuff to work with. So assuming that you have all of these arcs when you were experimenting and you want to kind of get rid of these curved lines so you can clean up your environment a bit and assuming that you were paying attention to the other lessons and notice that these are not the same arcs that were there from the other lesson. Points for noticing the um, magic of film editing. You can select with the select tool different things in this environment like this Temple Grandin avatar. And you see that it's a two dimensional object that will forever be looking at you. You can select this shape in here or that area in there or boom, 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 this entire funky shape. Anything that you select either becomes dotted or turns blue. So that's a good indicator of what exactly you're selecting at the time. So assuming you wanted to clean up these arcs that you drew or some things in your environment that you drew, you could do one of two things. You could either try to select each one, come in here, but you have to hit it just right, like bang, right on the line. And if it turns blue, it has been selected and it's ready to be edited. So you can just hit backspace or delete on your keyboard or you can come over here and click it and it turns blue and then you can right click it and hit erase or cut. So that's another way to do it. Or, and what I want you to take away from this is that there are, is usually more than one way to do something in this environment. So I'm always open to suggestions if, about how to do things. If you find some way to do something, please tell me and I would love to know because it may be helping me help other people down the line learn how to use this thing. You could also go to the second tool called the eraser tool. And it looks like an eraser. And how you use it is literally there's an eraser there. So you could either try to line up that circle right on the line like this and click it and it disappears. Or you can sweep across. You can sweep across this environment to grab several things. So literally left click it and hold it and go across the things that you'd like to erase and let go. And anything that was turned blue is going to be erased. So be careful with that, though, because if you start sweeping across your entire environment and you grab a corner of your building and it erases half of your building, well, that could be frustrating. If that ever happens, you have a living time machine right in front of you. You can always hit Control and Z and it will undo the thing you just did. There are a lot of keyboard shortcuts that are universal across different um, applications like SketchUp or uh, Google Docs or Microsoft Word or PowerPoint, whatever. And those include uh, Control Z to undo, Control X to cut and things like that. So check out keyboard shortcuts when you get a chance. Maybe I'll do a tutorial on that. So come back to the select tool and if you select a shape one time, you're selecting one dimension. If you select a shape two times, you're selecting two dimensions of a two dimensional shape. So you're grabbing both the area inside of it and the perimeter of the shape. When we have three dimensional forms in here, you'd have to click it three times to grab all three dimensions, the X, the Y and the Z in order to select the entire object. So the number of clicks determines how many dimensions you're selecting. If I click one time inside the center section, it is just the area inside of that shape. And if I hit delete while it's dotted, it deletes it and opens it up. Control Z, bring it back. If I select Temple Grandin and I delete him, well, it's gone, but I really want you to keep that there because it's a really great point of reference of something that's relatively five and a half to six feet tall. And that way you don't get confused in this environment about being miles away and you don't know what's going on because you're not paying attention to the dimensions window in the bottom corner and you're making something that's two miles high and you're like, why, why are things glitching on me? So control Z and bring that back if you got rid of it and I'll see you for the next tutorial on shapes. This is where it gets really fun.